Now, the generic properties of oscillators are summed up on this slide. Oscillators can be categorized by their frequency range, what's the minimum output frequency they can provide. Often you also have a typical frequency and the maximum frequency, which is telling us about the variation and the stability of the clock. As we spoke about previously, crystal-based oscillators, so the ones with the mechanical vibration in the piezos, are very often extremely precise and therefore used for clock generation in precision digital circuits. You can have different waveforms at the output of an oscillator. Can be sinusoidal, can be square wave, can be pulsed signals, can be triangles, or even any other signal that you would like to generate. The jitter is another measure for frequency stability, which can be observed in high-speed oscilloscopes on so-called eye diagrams. The RLC-based oscillator networks are very often temperature dependent and therefore also the stability of an oscillator at different temperatures can be a deciding parameter of which oscillator to use in a given application. And then it's not only about the timing, but it's also about the amplitude. So we also need to make sure that the voltage range, the signal range of the oscillator is within the range of what we actually need for our circuit. Now I have one exercise for you that also gives you a little bit of a taste of research in electrical engineering based on that paper that I wrote quite a while ago. This journal paper includes the analysis of an A-stable integrating modulator and other than getting a feeling on journal paper publications given in the reference list here, you can practice your LT spice skills further to reproduce the diagrams 18 and 19 in that journal paper by your LT spice simulation. Certainly, you can use also any other circuit simulator if you prefer any other simulation program.